And so I discovered overexcitability in 2014 because I was trying to learn more about twice exceptionality. I came to that term because of my son. He clearly was a smart kid, but he was very hyperactive and he just could not seem to pay attention. And so he was diagnosed with ADHD. We did neuropsych testing with him. And after the neuropsych testing, his teacher said, you know, um, have you heard of being twice exceptional? And I had not heard of that. But when I started investigating it, it blew me away because I recognized myself in it even more than my kid. It just shocked me to learn that you could be gifted and disabled because I had grown up being identified as a very gifted kid. I don't, there are a lot of words around it now. I think I would have been identified as a profoundly gifted kid, but that was not, that wasn't language I was familiar with when I was growing up. But regardless of all I had heard about being gifted and even seeing that in myself as a young person, the fact is by the time I hit like 20 or 21, I felt way more disabled than I felt gifted. And so by the time I was 20, well, by the time I was, I don't know, a sophomore or junior in high school, I already saw myself as mentally ill way before anybody else did. I identified with that. I started looking for answers in the DSM and I found them because it's easy to find yourself in the DSM. I mean, it was, it was no problem. I was depressed. I was anxious. So I was looking at these different diagnostic criteria and labeling myself all over the place. But when I was 19, I was given the label bipolar disorder and that was it. I saw that as an answer, but along with that, there was anxiety, um, panic disorder was another one I got pretty, pretty quickly. And so that's how I saw myself. I really identified as mentally ill and to the point where I was on disability for many years, at least 10 years. I was in and out of the hospital many times, like a dozen times, I would say. Hi, Carrie. And so by the time I had my son and by the time this twice exceptional came into my mind, I had spent years of, I was like, I don't know, let's see. Well, I was like 40. And so I I had spent much of my life uh, in mental health treatment and taking medication, seeing myself as essentially broken. I mean, I looked, when I looked at the past, I was always trying to understand what went wrong and where, like, where had my symptoms began? And so it was always from that deficit lens, the pathologizing myself. And so when I came to Twice Exceptional, I started doing searches for emotional intensity because that's who I was. I was emotionally intense. I saw myself as very reactive, anxious. The anxiety was never better in my life. Even, I mean, I took clonopin for years, but it, it, there was always too much energy for me. And so when I started doing my searches in 2014, well, because so in 2014, I started doing an autoethnography because I was a doctoral student at the time in psychology. And so Even though I was working on my dissertation, I decided to do a separate research project just for myself, like to understand better what had happened, what had gone wrong for me. And now I had this kid who had a whole different set of issues than I had had. And so I was also trying to understand him better. And so I came across the work of Michael Pihofsky on overexcitability. And when I first read it, I did not love it. I came to it and I thought, I just, I remember reading it and feeling so unsettled by what he was saying, (laughs) because if he was right about overexcitability being what was going on with me, then it would mean, well, 
that I was wrong about myself, basically, that so much of what I had perceived as problematic and defective was actually like a blessing in term, like in the framework of this theory he was talking about, this theory of positive disintegration. And so I just, whew, I put that down for a minute. <laughs> and I just, I remember like highlighting it and going over it and then putting it away and being like, no, I can't even go there. But I kept doing searches because I'm doing research and I'm just, and his name would come up again and again. And overexcitability was coming up again and again. And so I couldn't ignore it. And finally, I started reading Dabrowski's actual work, who, you know, Michael's work is based on Dabrowski's theory. Um, but one thing that was hard for me to reconcile was that when you read the overexcitability research, or the papers in gifted education about overexcitability, you see that everyone is perceiving overexcitability as something different than ADHD or whatever. Like I never, and so by the time I came to this all, like I should mention that ADHD is another label I had been given. And I started taking medication for ADHD in 2013. So right around that time, because when my son was diagnosed with ADHD and he was taking Adderall, I was like, hmm, <laughs> what if I tried Adderall? And so I started taking, I went to my doctor and I said, you know, if my son has ADHD and I've been given that diagnosis too in the past, perhaps I should treat that and see. And so we, it was this whole road of like trying to figure out the right diagnosis for me. And as soon as I started taking medication, for ADHD, I found that my ability to regulate myself emotionally was dramatically better. Like I was shocked by the difference it made in my life. It was astonishing. And so that was another thing that when I came to overexcitability, I was like, can it really be true that this is something different? Like is ADHD a misdiagnosis for me and my kid? So that's how I came to all of this. And so I did that research myself and well, long story short, I connected with the people in the gifted education community like Michael Buhofsky and Linda Silverman and all the people like in that camp that uh, are part of this gifted child paradigm, which in all of this is like too much to get into in this call. But I just wanted to give you like the flavor of it because if you wanna know more about any of these like little details, just let me know and I can give you papers or whatever to help make sense of it all. But when I started connecting with Michael Pihofsky, I was like, well, I just assumed that he would be interested in my life because I mean, when I continued reading his work, I was like, well, this guy's talking about me. <laughs> and so I would write to him and be like, well, what about this? And what about this? And here's uh, like a 2000 word email to you. And I'm doing this all the time. I mean, I did, I was relentless with this man. I was writing to him at least every day, starting in like 2016. And sometimes more than once a day. I mean, I was just like hyper-focused on understanding overexcitability. And his take was like, you don't have ADHD. That's crazy of you to think that you're just gifted like it's your giftedness it's it's ridiculous for you to think that there's some other diagnosis involved follow link in description to learn more